Aloha, and welcome to another Cabrina Tech Tip. This time around, we'll be guiding you through the 2009 IDS Upgrade Install Kit. Before getting started, let's be sure we have everything we need to ensure that the job runs as smoothly and as easily as possible. The kit contains the 2010 D-Power Mainline, the 2010 CAS with overslide and tension ring and the stainless shackle, the center line adjuster, the new center line, a new internal IDS landing line, and a new bungee line tensioner. The kit should also include a new 2010 center line swivel, new 1 meter rear line control extension sets, and a new 2010 standard harness loop. Tools needed for this job are fairly minimal. Start with 2 meters or longer of fishing line as well as a small flathead screwdriver and lastly a small number one Phillips head screwdriver like the one included in your kite bag. So the first thing you want to do is find an open area with adequate space. Lay out and separate your lines all the way to the end. We recommend doing this indoors or somewhere with smooth surfaces as it does involve handling some small parts which can be easily lost. Start by pulling the Velcro open on the IDS landing line quick release handle. This is known as QR2. It will release the landing line ring from the security pin. Now activate QR1 to separate the harness loop from the D-Power main line. With the harness loop now out of the way, you can remove the stainless steel ring by unthreading it from the landing line. With the IDS landing line now free on one side, you can completely unthread it and pull it through the primary quick release, the bar, and the upper triangle of the CAS unit. The next step will be to remove the bungee tensioner as well as the IDS landing line which it's connected to. Do so by unthreading it from the center line swivel. You can now go ahead and remove both center lines by unthreading the center line pigtail from the upper portion of the center line swivel. Next, go ahead and remove the lower center line section as well as the swivel. Do so by unthreading it from the upper triangle of the CAS unit. Now would be a good time to unthread the CAS lower triangle link and remove the upper loop of the D-Power mainline from it. Using the number one Phillips head screwdriver, loosen the two set screws on either side of the stopper ball and remove it. It's important to note here that there are two set screws. Loosening only one side will make removal of the stopper ball very difficult. With the red stopper ball removed, you should now be able to slide the override unit directly off of the D-Power mainline. With the D-Power mainline now freed up, you should be able to go ahead and pull it all the way out and we can begin with upgrade kit installation. So the first step is going to be to remove the red stopper ball off the end of your new 2010 D-Power mainline. This will allow you to feed it up into the bar and begin installation. Next is to go ahead and prepare the new CAS unit to slide onto the main line. Check to see that the tension ring is completely opened up, offering the loosest fit possible around the override body. With this setting, it will be possible to slide the new override body over the D-Power main line. With the override body in place, you can now install the new stopper unit by sliding it on and over the top of the D-Power main line. The fit here is designed to be fairly snug, so go ahead and have a little patience when you're installing it and getting it set into the correct position. Correct positioning here should be that the tubing ends are flush with each other and that both set screws line up with the wall that separates the chambers. 
Next, we're going to go ahead and unscrew and remove the lower triangle link off this new CAS unit. With the link now detached, you can go ahead and thread that section through the upper loop of the D-Power mainline and then go ahead and reattach it to the CAS strap. Next, we're going to go ahead and install the centerline adjuster link. This attaches to the upper triangle of the CAS unit. Attach the line to itself by making a small lark's head loop on one end and then taking the opposite end and sliding it through the loop. Slide the line down until it catches on the knot that's tied into the line. The next step is to attach the new center line directly to the new link that you just installed. Do so by using a standard loop-to-loop -loop connection. Next, you'll want to attach the new center line swivel. Do so by threading the loose end of the new center line through the one end of the swivel and over the top section and back through itself. This will secure it to the swivel and you can attach your center lines to the other side. Now you'll need to attach your new bungee tensioner to that same lower ring that you just attached the center line to. Do so by attaching the bungee line directly onto itself, just as we're showing you here. The next step is to take your new internal landing line and thread it onto the loose end of the bungee line tensioner. You can do this using that same tried and true loop to loop connection. With the new landing line now securely attached, the next thing to do is to thread it into the new D Power main line. This is where you'll feed the 2 meter fishing line extension through the loose end of the landing line to use as a guide as you fish it into the new multi bore D Power main line. Go ahead and feed the line into the empty chamber of the multi bore tubing and continue to feed it until you see the two ends of the fishing line come out the bottom of the primary QR. Now, simply pull on both ends of the fishing line and continue to do so until several inches of landing line come out. With the new landing line now exposed, you can go ahead and reattach the IDS ring to the end of the IDS line. Do so by threading the loop through the ring and then up and over to secure it. With the ring now secured, you can go ahead and attach the new chicken loop directly to the primary quick release. Now that that's done, the next step would be to take the landing line ring and reattach it to the security pin. Once it's attached, you'll want to rewrap the velcro of the secondary quick release around the security pin. Take care to ensure that the velcro is wrapped as high and as tight as possible and should be fully covering the security pin. This will help with any unintentional disconnecting of the kite. With the landing line totally secured, you can go ahead and screw down the two set screws on the stopper ball provided the orientation is as shown in our example. It's worth noting here that the set screws need only be tightened to the point where they are flush with the stopper ball. Tightening past this point isn't necessary. Now we can go ahead and reattach our center lines. This can be done by threading the centerline pigtail directly through the upper ring of the centerline swivel. Then just thread the center lines back onto themselves. So we're almost there. One of the final steps is going to be to take both outside flying lines and to remove the line connectors, otherwise known as the pigtails. With the pigtails now off, you can go ahead and attach the 1 meter flying line extensions. These are attached using that same tried and true loop to loop connection. With the outside line extensions now on, you can go ahead and reattach the line connectors, otherwise known as pigtails, by using that same loop to loop connection. Well, it should go without saying but you will need to perform the same exact procedure to the opposite side. So this is it. We're pretty much done. 
the final step is to go outside and to check our line links. When performing your final check on line links, Cabrina kites are designed to fly with all four lines dead even at full power. If you should need additional help on how to properly check for this, please consult your user manual or you can always email us directly through the website. Thanks for watching and see you on the water.